Dolayısıyla niye ki Mike Praise the Lord. We we pray and we ask the Lord to to speak to us this morning. Lord, as uh, as we are entering in your word, Lord. Father, we pray that you open our heart to listen to your word. Give us the grace, Lord, to understand the mysteries of the kingdom so that we are transformed in your likeness. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So, uh, this morning, uh, we are going to uh, meditate on, or we are going to, we will be discussing on um, the topic. Uh, I'm continuing with faith. So today is the, is the third day on faith. So, how faith in Christ is freedom. When I when I place my faith, my trust in the Lord, just now I heard you all singing, He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. How, when I place my faith in Jesus, leads to freedom. Jesus said in John 19 and verse 30, 30, He said, it is finished. When the Lord was on the cross, taking his last breath, he said, it is finished. Now, what is finished that the Lord said? When the Lord said it is finished, he was talking about the task that his father has given him. He was talking about the cup that he was supposed to drink about which he has spoken in John 18 and verse, verse 11. John 18, verse 11. Uh, when the soldiers came and they were about to, about to take Jesus, and, and Peter was the one who took the sword, and, and that's when Jesus told him that, shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So Jesus on the cross actually drank the cup that the Father has given him. Now, the Lord drank the cup. The Lord accomplished the work that Abba Father has given him. Our faith depends on the work of Jesus. And when I say our faith depends on the work of Jesus which means we solely depend on what Jesus has done for us. The forerunner of Jesus, John the Baptist, the one to prepare the way for the Lord. We are in the season of Advent. The one to prepare the way for the Lord. And when he saw Jesus passing by, this is what he said. He said, here is the lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1 and verse 29. John 1, 29. Uh, this is what John the Baptist said. He said, here is the lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, when John was pointing out to Jesus that he is the one, the lamp of God, to take away the sins of the world. It has to do with the very purpose of Jesus, the very mission that he accomplished by saying it is finished. One of the area which everyone, the entire human race suffers is sin. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Romans 3 23 says, 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. The entire human race, irrespective of your religion, irrespective of your faith, every human being has sinned. And sin is the problem that, that the entire human race was suffering and is suffering. And Jesus has come to deal with it. When Jesus came to deal with it, he came to take the sins not away from us, rather to take our sin on himself. Now, sin is lawlessness. In other words, breaking the command of God. First John chapter 3 verse 4 says, sin is lawlessness. Everyone who breaks the law is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. In other words, when I break the command of my God, I commit sin. And Jesus came to deal with it. Now, when I place my faith on Jesus, I receive the freedom. The first freedom that I receive is the freedom from sin. Okay. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more on sin. So remember it and if you're making a note, keep it in mind. The first freedom that we receive when we place our faith on Jesus is freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. Now, the moment any of us commit sin, in fact, David says in Psalm, I am guilty, I am sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And, and that's what we, we believe. We believe in the original sin. So we have the original sin already with us. So we are born with sin. We all have the original sin. Which is washed by, by baptism. Through baptism. So we are born in sin. And all that we have been doing is sin, sin and sin. That has been a part and partial of human race. Only thing that has changed today is the way of sinning has changed. But sin still continues. Now, because of the sin that we commit, because of breaking of God's commandment, you and I and the entire human race is separated from God. Lord says in Isaiah 59, Verse 1 and 2, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, the Lord says, Your sin has become a wall for me. It begins with this, like this, the Lord says, uh, Is my ear deaf that I can't hear your cries? It is your sin that has created a wall of separation before us. In other translation, it is, it is your sin that has hid my face from you. Our sin has separated us from God. Adam and Eve, who had a fellowship with the Father, who walked with the Father, were separated from the Father through sin. And so the Lord had to ask them the question, where are you? Where are you? Now you see, uh, sin has number of consequences. Now, I'm not going to talk about the consequence of wrongdoing or sins today. Because my focus is on freedom. Now, sin has separated us from God and sin has also led us to death. On one side, our relation with God is affected. We are separated from God. On the other side, Romans chapter 6, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. 
on the other side there is a coldness of relation between me and my neighbor so on one side sin has affected my relation with my god and the other side sin has brought about a problem between me and my neighbor two consequences my relation with god is affected my relation with my neighbor is affected now please understand anyone who sin is the slave of sin that's why jesus said john 8 verse 34 anyone who sin is the slave of sin in other word the moment we commit sin we become or we join ourselves with the devil so on one side i break up my relation with god and the other side i join a relationship with the evil one you see it is dangerous it is dangerous to be a friend of the devil it's very dangerous because his desires are not good his desires is to make you from bad to worse till he completely destroy you okay now now in this situation you know where sin rules and most of us if you look at life one of the area we are struggling the most is sin that's the reason uh, we 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 try our best going for retreats uh, in fact this the zoom meeting also that we have we have in order to keep up our faith to keep up our flame so that we grow in god now sin as i told you is the first and the biggest problem that everyone faces now in the old testament if you see there is a festival in the old testament called atonement the day of atonement now i am not going in the detail of atonement i just want to speak a part of the atonement and now i want you to read this part open up to leviticus leviticus chapter uh, 16 and verse 7 leviticus 16 verse 7 yeah please read any one of you Leviticus sixteen, ah, sixteen verse seven. Yeah. He shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Okay. Now, and read verse nine. Same Aaron. Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord, and offer it as a sin offering. Amen. Continue. Yeah, but the goat on which the lot fell for Azel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away. into the wilderness to the uh, azel amen uh, read verse 21 also 1621 yeah then aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of israel and all their transgression all their sin putting them on the head of the goat and sending it away into the wilderness by means of someone designated for the task amen okay yeah. now i'm just pointing out about a few things from atonement not everything see aaron was the high priest and as a priest he's supposed to enter to the holy of holies 
So first he need to be sanctified himself. So he is supposed to sacrifice a bull. So that is given. I would, uh, I'll give you a little homework to read uh, Leviticus 16. Okay. In your homework, please read Leviticus 16. I would say uh, in your free time, read Leviticus 16. Why? Because the Old Testament has a fulfillment in the New Testament. Now, once Aaron has made this sacrifice of the bull, and then he has gone for the... Uh, so, first he has to do with his own purification. And then we read about two goats. One, uh, and, and it will be basically taken with Lot, okay, they are with Lot. And one will be for the sacrifice of sin. And the other one is where the sins of the people is to be confessed and it is to be left. Left where? In the desert, left out. To be, you know, uh, uh, to be, to be, to be, to be destroyed. Because it is carrying the sins of the people. Now, please, whatever is in the Old Testament is just a shadow of what is coming in the New Testament. The sheep, the goat, the bull, all these sacrifices that we saw in the Old Testament is a symbol of the perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Now, there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. So, in the Old Testament, blood was shed. Hebrew chapter 9 verse 22 says, There is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Hebrew 9.22 There is no shedding of blood without. So, there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. And so, you know, all these sacrifices were made year after year. Now, Jesus, who was with the Father, and this is what Jesus said. He said, Hebrew 10 verse 5, Hebrew 10 verse 5. And I want you to read this, Hebrew 10 verse 5. He was with the Father, in the form of the Father. And, that's where, and this is what Jesus says in Hebrew. Chapter 10 and verse 5. Yeah. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. Amen. Jesus' says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. In other words, it was all made according to the plans of God. God directed Moses. And yet, you know, the sin of animal was not able to unite the people to the Almighty God. Heaven was still shut down. Jesus, the Son of God, takes the body. And that's what we are in this time where the word is becoming flesh is going to be born in our midst. Jesus took the flesh and was born. Now, from here begins the very first thing, the freedom from sin. John the Baptist introduced him as the lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. Just as in the day of atonement, the ship was carrying the sins of the people, Jesus carried your sin and my sin. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5 says, in verse 5 he says, He carried our sins, verse, verse 53 onwards. He bore our iniquities. We can read that verse 53, verse 4 and 5. He bore our iniquities. He carried our sicknesses. And by his wounds we are healed. We are healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just uh, read it out, sister. Yeah. yeah. Four and five, huh? Yeah, yeah. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities upon him was the punishment that made us whole and by his bruises we are healed amen by his bruises we are healed jesus carried our sins now when i say jesus carried our sins i'm pointing out to you that uh, you know when i say jesus carried our sins i'm pointing out to you this part that jesus took your and my sins on himself uh, by the way i want to ask a question here and i want you to think about it what was the need for jesus to take our sins on himself what was the need for jesus to take our sins on himself why now we don't have an interactive thing where you know otherwise each one will be speaking uh, but still i want you all to speak any one of you all i mean like you know if jesus would not have taken our sins on himself was there any other way we have received the freedom from sins right through the blood of jesus jesus died on the cross for us was there any other way there was no other way and i want to point out something serious to you please understand this okay psalm 89 verse 14 psalm 89 verse 14 and deuteronomy 32 verse 4 both of them has one thing in common and that is god is just hmm god is just okay can you open up to any one of them psalm 89 i'm yeah. opening up i will read it for you yeah please righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne steadfast love and faithfulness go before you psalm 89 14 so righteousness is the foundation of the throne of god can god forgive your sins can god forgive your sins and your answer is yeah obviously god forgives my sins yes amen sorry god cannot forgive your sins basically <laughs> if god is a just god he cannot forgive your sins see cain killed abel right cain killed abel and the blood of abel was crying out let me give you an example from our day to day life and hear me carefully someone has you know someone has for example you know someone has killed a person's husband and she has gone to the you know and she has seen the person and i mean when she came she saw one person um, having the knife covered with blood and running away from her house and she could recognize the person and she went to police station and and the person was arrested the person was brought before the judge and imagine the judge telling you know and, and you know the person is pleading and saying uh, your majesty i'm so sorry i i've sinned i've sinned i've committed murder forgive me and the judge says go i forgive you you're scot free go home will the lady be quiet who lost her husband will she not cry injustice 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 are you all there now if this is what is injustice in in in, our, in terms of our law and order please i'm going something deep okay i'm going to i'm discussing something deep pay attention i'm opening the mysteries of god to you in terms of justice the lady whose husband was killed if the judge says to the lady go i forgive this man because this man is sorry for what he has done and you will say it is injustice 
injustice done to this wife, injustice done to her because her husband is killed and the judge, what is this judge doing? In case of us, we like, you know, scot free. I go to God, God forgives me, I am free. Sorry. God is just. He has to punish. If he doesn't, you know what will happen? He goes against justice itself. Hallelujah. Now, now I'm going into deeper, okay? I'm going a little deeper. Pay attention, I'm going deeper. Otherwise, you will misunderstand. You will not understand. We say divine mercy, isn't it? And in divine mercy, we say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And when on the on 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 the on the beat we say that one one beat that comes in the middle we say, Eternal Father. And then we go on to say, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Atonement means amending. Atonement means. In other words, taking your and my place. Jesus, the son of God. Now, I'm, I'm coming back to the same story. The judge is about to sentence this man to death. Who committed murder, who killed the husband of this, of this lady. And that's when, you know, another person walks into the court and say, Sir, I want to say something. And the judge permits him to come and he says, I am the person who is the main, who is the person to commit this crime and not he. And he takes the entire blame on himself. And this person is punished. And the person who was holding the dagger is set free. See, justice demands punishment. On cross, you know what happened? Jesus took your sin and my sin. He was bearing our punishment, my dear family. Every sin that we committed, Jesus took it on yourself. In other words, justice was done. Justice was done, family. Justice was done. But the one to receive was not you and I. The one to receive was Jesus. The cup of suffering. Jesus suffered for our sins means what? He suffered the consequence of sins. Remember I told you there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. So Jesus took your place and my place on the cross. He suffered for you. He suffered for me. He paid every single drop of his blood for your and my sins. Justice was paid. Victor was supposed to be hanged on the cross for every sin Victor has done. I deserve to die. I deserve to suffer. I deserve the death that Jesus has gone through. But Jesus took that death on himself. Justice was done, family. Justice was done. Every sin that I committed, punishment was given to whom? Not to me, but to Jesus. Then what do I receive? I receive mercy. I receive mercy. So God by God, just can't, you know, let go of sin. If he let go of sin, he's not just God. How can he be just? Sin has to be dealt with, right? God dealt with sin. On one side, he punished, he sacrificed his own son, Jesus Christ. On the other hand, because of the death of his son, Jesus, he showed his mercy on us. So next time when you say, 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world remember he died in your place and in my place and because of his death you and i are free hallelujah <clears throat> okay understood our justice was paid and mercy received god acted justly at the same time mercifully he had no mercy on his son jesus christ when he was pleading before his father and crying out to him and saying father take this cup away from me father had no mercy no mercy he had on his son because that is the only way human race can be saved justice need to be done justice need to be done and justice was done but not you and i jesus took your place and my place just as we saw in leviticus 16 and and my dear sister read very beautifully the sheep the sheep that carried the sins of the people the people of israel were supposed to die but it was the sheep that carried the sins of the people it was the sheep that was it was the goat that was sacrificed here there was no goat here it was the son of god himself hallelujah so next time when you and i commit sin we need to remember this the price of my sin is the death of jesus on the cross we are not forgiven just by go your sins are forgiven no 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 we are forgiven by the shedding of the blood of jesus justice paid mercy received justice paid mercy received remember the secret of your freedom and my freedom now you know uh, the moment jesus died and he resurrected he got forgiveness for every one of us hebrew chapter 9 verse 12 he took the blood to his father he took the blood to his father because in the eyes of father in justice we are all supposed to go to hell and where jesus went after that he went to heaven or he went to hell any one of you can tell me jesus after that hell he went hell. to hell brother hell praise hell. the lord why did he went hell. to hell jesus went to hell because you and i you and i are supposed to go to hell listen he suffered everything that we are supposed to suffer not just a miserable death but also going to hell also going to hell and so and so he carried he carried what he carried his blood he took his blood to the father hebrew 9 verse 12 he took his blood to the father hebrew 9 12 and he said father this is my blood the blood that i've shed for your people and then you know what he did this we can see first corinthian chapter 6 verse 20 and first corinthian 7:23 anyone you can open up there is a word given there price price 620 yeah i want you to read that word yeah price there is a price for you for first corinthians 620 yeah for you were bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body amen uh, the price we have a price tag we have a price tag now you and i you and i who lived in sin you and i who were who were cut off from god jesus he went to the father he poured out his blood to the father as an atonement as the sacrifice of sin and by 
his blood you and i you and i are redeemed so he gave his blood for what for justice his blood was paid for justice and the moment his blood was paid for justice what happened to us we are redeemed and so we have a price tag the price of your and i salvation the price of your and our forgiveness of sin is the blood of jesus next time when we commit sin just just think of it you know all the wrong that we think he had to wear the crown of thorns because of the evil that we think with our mind every unholy touch his hand was nailed see every sin he committed has to do with an act of wrong that we have done justice was paid and must and mercy received and that's the reason you know that we are cleansed by the blood of jesus first john chapter 1 verse 7 first john chapter 1 verse 7 says the blood of jesus cleanses us of all sins cleanses us of all sins so family the first thing that we have is when we place our faith on jesus we are set free from sin hallelujah we are set free from sin we are set free from the just judgment of god and what do we receive we receive the mercy of god now now there is one word i wanted to read and, and you know this is where we have a problem now we are all supposed to be free from sin right but we the community of believers we the community of the followers of christ are we still in sin that's what we are going to see now hebrew chapter 12 and verse 4 hebrew 12 and verse 4 please pay attention to the word okay because here uh, there is one mistake we make in our spirituality hebrew 12 verse 4 yeah in your struggle against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood mm. in your struggle against sin you know most of us um, we are struggling with sin we are not struggling against sin and that is the problem and that's why we are living in sin i'm going a little deeper pay attention the word my sister just now read is in your struggle against sin but problem with us is we struggling with sin is there a difference with in the two statement struggling with sin and struggling against sin there is a difference most of us we are struggling with the act of doing wrong and you know the moment we do wrong we are we are crying to god we are you know uh, we are doing this we are doing that we are struggling with sin bible doesn't tell us about struggling with sin bible tells us about struggling against sin so number 1 we receive freedom from sin but you know we are not able to enjoy our freedom from sin why we are not able to enjoy the freedom from sin is because we are struggling with sin and not against sin i'm going to explain it with sin and against sin say a person uh happen to you know uh they happen to borrow some money and for some reason the person failed to pay back the money and days are passing by and the person is not able to pay back them you see the person is struggling is struggling with what is struggling with debt the the money he has borrowed struggling with debt now in terms of sin for example 
a person has uh, say a person has committed a particular sin say a person happened to say a lie then the person struggling with that sin and the person want to make confession the person want to reconcile with god struggling with sin struggling against sin is you struggle so that you do not sin you struggle that you do not sin it basically means not your struggle after committing the act of sin rather it's about your action before committing a sin struggle against sin now when i speak about a struggle against sin you know uh, we will live a free life in jesus only and only when we are free from sin let's be very clear we have seen it with our own life now there are two kind of sin okay when is a internal sin one is a external sin now you would always have heard venial sin and mortal sin now i am bringing an internal sin and external sin praise the lord now what is internal sin internal sin has to do with mark chapter 7 verse 21 22 a mark 7 21 22 is the internal sin the sin that is inside me external sin james chapter 1 verse 15 james chapter 1 verse 15 i'm going to explain both of them when i speak about the internal sin it basically means the evil in my heart the evil that is residing in my heart the evil in my flesh that is the sin that is inside me it's already a part of me it's in me. external sin james 1:15 is when the desire grow up it gives birth when desire conceive it gives birth to sin in other word my act of doing something for example you spoke a lie that is external you have done it it's an action whereas in your mind you are planning for example in your mind you are planning to betray when for example judas judas was planning to betray jesus and he was looking for an opportunity opportunity to get him arrested it was internal it was going on internal it was in his mind it was in his heart it was internal now when he went to the chief priest and he said what will you give me when i will hand over jesus to you that was external the act so there is a internal and there is an external internal is in the mind we keep thinking about it we keep desiring it it's a part of my flesh that's internal external is when i do it praise the lord okay so we have a internal and external sin now this internal and external sin that we have most of us are occupied with as i told you with sin not against sin we are occupied with the sins that we are committing now if we are so occupied with the sins we are committing when will we come to the stage where when will we come to the state you know where we will be uh, working against the sin that is inside me jesus has come to give us freedom from sin family he has come to give us freedom from sin we need to stop the action of sin and that can be stop in three ways okay i'm not going to elaborate on that there are three ways uh, in which we can enjoy the freedom jesus has given me okay for so freedom from sin i'm still discussing about the freedom from sin the first way i can be free from sin the first way i can be free from sin is romans chapter 8 verse 2 romans 8 verse 2 the bible says for the law of the spirit has set me free from the law of sin and death 
what does it mean? It means, what is the law of the spirit? You know, we never, we don't know about the law of the spirit. We know about the Ten Commandments. We know about the 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 rules of the church. What is the law of the spirit? The law of the spirit is every prompting that the Holy Spirit gives you. Every time when the Holy Spirit convicts you and tells you, do this or do that, that is the law of the Spirit. Because when the Lord speaks, when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit Lord speaks, it is a command. It is not a suggestion or a request. It is a command. It is a law. The moment you and I listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you and I, with the prompting of the Holy Spirit, can resist the inclination of the flesh. You and I can resist the temptation that comes. So, number one, we can be free from sin by listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the law of the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 2. Number two, as Jesus told his, uh, his, uh, his apostles in Matthew 26, and verse 41, watch and pray, watch and pray. So number two is watch, watch over what? Watch over the situations, the occasion of sin. Watch over what leads you to sin. Cut it off. Cut it off, Jesus said. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, plug it out. Cut out or remove. The occasion of sins. Number two. And number three. Pray. 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 Number three. Pray. Because when we pray. You know St. Paul prayed in, in, the, in the book of Corinthians. He prayed. And the Lord said. My grace is sufficient for you. My power. Is perfected in your weakness. These are the three things. I repeat one more time. Number one is your listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 2. Number two, watch. For what? For the occasion of sins. Don't avoid the occasion of sins. If you are, you have the weakness of alcohol, don't go to the bar and expect God to help you. That Lord... I know you are with me. I'm going to the bar, Lord. I have been an alcoholic in the past. But Lord, I know you have set me free. And so I am going to the bar. My friends are drinking. I am with them. And you don't keep joining all the alcoholics. You will land up drinking it. Number two, avoid the occasion of sins. And number three, so that you depend on God. You know, by practicing these three, we can remain and enjoy the freedom that Jesus has given us from sins. Oh, it's so much of freedom to live a life of grace free from sin. So faith in Jesus gives us the freedom from sin. Now, does it mean that a believer will not fall in sin? No, no, you will fall in sin. I will fall in sin. But there is a difference. Now again, make a note if you are making a note. There are two kinds of uh, sins we can do, okay? Two kinds of sins. Again, one is internal, external, I told you. The other is, I can either live in sin or I can fall in sin. There is a difference between the two. I'll give you a Bible verse for it and I'll explain to you. Living in sin is Hebrew 10.26. Sister, can you read Hebrew 10.26, okay? Yes, and, falling, and falling in sin... You know, you and I can fall in sin. It has to do with, you know, with temptation. We can fall into sin. Yeah. yeah. Shall I read? Please read. Hebrew 10. For if, yeah. For if we willfully persist, persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice, sacrifice for sin. Now, please understand, we are not supposed to live in sin. 
we are not supposed to persist and continue in sin see for example i'll give you give me give me a simple example you know suppose you're scrolling in the phone and you know you're getting some app and you're doing something and suddenly you know some some dirt some dirty ad pops up and you know you see some some nude some 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 filthy dirty ad pops up and in your weakness in your weakness you would have just clicked on it you know first time you avoided second time you avoided and again it pops in and you click on it and you see that there is a dirty video there that was a mistake you have fallen in sin the next thing the moment you realize you already realizing what i'm doing is wrong but you know you're still into it and you watch that video or you landed up abusing yourself get up the very next day and if not possible wait for one two days whenever possible go and make a very good confession and live a life and next time the moment something props up like that first thing you do is you move out of it completely you for that time you just go to the some other site you mean avoid avoid in a way that you know those thing doesn't come in put some you know some there are some restrictions where by which you know those thing will never prop up in that case you have fallen in sin but you're not living in sin yes that day you were weak in your weakness you went into it you saw it and you landed up abusing yourself but what you did next moment you got up you told the lord i'm sorry lord and the lord restored you back that's what bible says first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 open up it was was 2 was 1 and 2 first john chapter 1 and 2 1 john 2 2 and e is the atoning sacrifice for our sin Okay. we can read from verse 1 verse 1 yeah. okay my little children i am writing these things to you so that you may not sin but if any one does sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sin and not for us only but also for the sins of the old world amen now family that is falling in sin right suppose you sin you land up sinning that's what the bible says in that case it was you know it in that case it was uh, falling in sin okay living in sin is you became friendly to somebody and you entered into a relationship and you are living into a unholy relationship days after day you are getting into a physical intimacy now according to the law of god sex is holy and it is supposed to be on the altar a bed is supposed to be the altar and it is sanctified through marriage anything outside this is sin be it before marriage or be it after marriage you have any extra marital affair it is sin and you continue in that it is living in sin i'm just give you an example any sin for example the same thing you know that something propped up and you saw but suppose you are seeing it every day you are living in sin fall happens once falls happen twice falling can happen sometimes but if i am doing it every day every day then you know what i am living in it in that case you know there is a big danger see jesus has given us the freedom from sin he has completely delivered us in case you know you are already caught up into it uh, you need you need a counseling you need 
a spiritual elder to guide you to come out come out of this weakness if any of you are listening to me if you know if you are living in sin it's time for you to open up open up to god and open up to someone whom god has placed in your life it can be a priest it can be an anointed preacher it could be anybody approach the person and tell him my dear sister my dear brother i am living in sin i need a help help me out now we are called for freedom as i'm going to wind up this this four more minute for me to 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 to, to finish now sin one of the thing which i was been i have been discussing so long now sin if we are in sin you know we cannot enjoy god uh john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and verse uh, uh we can open to john 8 and verse 35 john okay. 8 john 835 The slave, hmm. Larry. Please, please, please. Stop. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. Amen. Um, what do you mean by this? Please understand. Many of us, you know, who are Christians, many of us who are following Jesus, we are slave in the house of God. in other word you are a slave to masturbation you are a slave to gossip you are a slave to to judge to judging others you are a slave to pride you are a slave to greed and you know on one side devil is having a hold over me in terms of gossip in terms of pride in terms of lust on the other hand i am joining the community and i am praying a slave doesn't remain in the house permanently through this was with jesus judas was in the house of god in other word he was in the community of jesus himself and yet he was a slave of satan and yet he kept robbing the money he kept robbing the money and what happened is the slave doesn't stay in the house forever he moved out of the house of god you and i who are joining this community or you and i who are who may be in any of the prayer group and hearing word of god going retreat hear my warning carefully my dear sister brother because this is the word of the lord himself a slave doesn't stay in the house forever but the son stays you can't be a slave of sin and living in the house of god some day or the other your master to whom you are a slave that sin satan will take you out from the house of god completely jesus has called you for freedom galatian chapter 5 and verse 1 it is for freedom the bible says it is for freedom christ has set us free so jesus has set you free for freedom enjoy the freedom of a child of god and remain free from sin and if ever you sin make sure you get up make sure you repent and tell the lord lord i have sinned one mistake you don't make don't keep making resolutions you make resolutions you break resolutions rather depend on god to set you free come we'll pray lord jesus father you took a place on the cross you suffered for my sins lord 
you died in my place. Justice was paid by your blood. And I received mercy. We received mercy by your death on the cross. Lord, we ask you, Lord, give us the grace not to give this freedom that you have given us, the freedom from sin, not to once again go back to sin, but give us the grace to live our freedom as a child of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would pause for questions if any questions are there.